Hi guys, I'm Owen of Van Trekking Lifestyle. Griddle me this. Can you cook a roast beef on the Blackstone griddle? Well, with the help of the Coleman oven that I bought to bake cupcakes for Lynn, I think you can. And today I'm gonna to show you how I'm gonna go about doing that. First thing we need to do is drink a little, no, we need to put a little avocado oil on the roast beef. This is two and a half pounds of eye of the round. And I'm going to rub this in. That's just awesome, man, that I dropped that. And we're gonna get it on all six sides. We're gonna put salt, pepper, and garlic powder on here to season it. And we're gonna just rub it in. And this is gonna be as good as grandma made. And we should be able to replicate this while we're traveling. It'd be hard to keep people away from our campsite if we're making a roast like this. All that's in there. We're gonna put into this pan, we're gonna put a little water on the bottom of it, just to keep it moist. And we're gonna drop in three cloves of garlic. Mainly because Lynn loves garlic. Right. And now, once I wash my hands, we're gonna go outside and put this on the griddle. Also gonna cut up a little bit of real butter. And we're gonna drop that in the bottom of this too. We couldn't decide if we wanted to cover it or not. It's in a pretty small space in that oven, but I think we're gonna err on the side of caution and cover this puppy with aluminum foil. All right, let's go put this in the oven. We're gonna close her up. We're at a little under 300 degrees right now. So it looks like 20 minutes per pound is what we're shooting for. So that means we're looking at about 50 minutes at 300 degrees. I think it's gonna take less than that and I'm gonna opt for less than that because the second part I'm gonna do is do a reverse sear on the griddle itself. So we're gonna say in about 35 minutes, I'm gonna check this and see what temperature we're at. A few things to note about cooking a roast in an oven on a Blackstone. You have to be patient. And you have to experiment as to what's gonna work best. Right now, I've checked the temperature twice and I'm up to about 80 degrees on the meat in the middle. So now, what we're trying to do is get up to about 120 and I'm gonna start watching it really, really closely. The next step after that, will be to reverse sear the meat to get a really good crust on it. And then we'll let it rest and we'll eat. But I'm getting ahead of myself. See, it's hard to be patient. We're somewhere between 110 and 116 right now in the middle of the piece of meat. And I'm gonna let it keep going for a while. Just keep checking it about every five to 10 minutes and we'll see where we go from there. It sure does smell good though. Wow. That would be a mistake, but I've turned the temperature up just a little just to speed this along. But as I do that, I realize I'm not being very patient, am I? So I don't know. We're going to try that and see where the meat goes from here. The temp is getting there though, and it sure is smelling good. Okay. We're starting to get there now. We're at 125 right now, slowly rising. We're gonna give it to about 130, and then we're gonna start the reverse sear process and see how that goes. Thanks for being with me. My name is Owen. This is Van Trekking Lifestyle, if you've never been here. We primarily travel around in that van you see right there, and we explore and do things that maybe old farts shouldn't do. But while we're in the van, we always cook on a Blackstone griddle outside and we enjoy the recipes. So when we're home, I try new recipes, and that's what we're doing today. If this is your first time with us, how about subscribing and keeping up with us and leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think about what's going on so far. Hope it turns out to be delicious and we hope we turn into good friends with you. Thanks for being part of this journey with us. You hear the thunder? Yeah, since I started cooking this slow cook, a storm has rolled in. I'm glad I'm underneath the, the front porch here. So we're up to temperature now on the inside. This is gonna to get to be tricky because I'm gonna use the same griddle to reverse sear. So the first thing I have to do is take this oven off, set it over here, put the griddle back on, get it back up to temperature, make sure it's good and oiled, and then take 
the roast out of here, off the pan, put it onto the griddle, reverse sear it, and then let it rest. And it's really raining outside, in case you can hear that in the background. Yeah, that storm has really gotten it. Right. So the next step is we're gonna put the grate, the actual griddle, back on the black stone. And then now I'm gonna turn the temperature back up here. And I'm gonna light the other side. And I'm gonna give that about two or three minutes to get up the temperature. And then we're gonna reverse sear. Should be awesome. Can't wait. All right, we're gonna take it out of the oven. And we're finished with the oven. Next step is gonna to be to reverse sear this so that it has a really good crust on it. Then we're gonna put some more salt and pepper and some butter on it. We're gonna baby it for just a little bit and it'll be ready to rest and then be dinner. Okay, here we go. Oh, listen to that, man. Let's put a little more salt and pepper on there. So let's flip it over. And salt on this side. Butter gonna, makes everything good. I think it's going to be good. It's smelling good right now. I think it's going to be good. So now we're going to temp this. We're looking for an inside temperature of about 140 is what I'm looking for. we got 124. Yes, it's going to be tricky. We've got 139 to 140 on the outside. But then going to the middle, we got 121. Okay, we're getting there. We're going to take it off and let it rest a little bit. Hopefully, I don't drop it. And then we'll slice it and see what it looks like. Thanks for being part of this cook with us. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. It's rested. Take the foil off. We've brought it inside and see what we've got to deal with right now. Yeah. Well, that first piece looks pretty good. You gonna taste it? I better do that, Hatna. Grandma would be proud. Man. Man. Come on, cut it in a diagonal now. Let's see if it's uh, something Maggie approves of. Sit down. Give me double five. Okay, see if you like it. Man, that's good stuff, isn't it? Is that it? good, Maggie? Oh. Is it good? Griddle me this, can you make roast beef on a blackstone griddle? Well, with the Coleman oven, you betcha. And I'm gonna take a bite of this now. We've got this plated up with candied carrots, fresh made mashed potatoes that are so soft, some horseradish sauce, and this roast beef. It's gonna be, it's gonna be the best thing I've made on my griddle so far. <laughs> Oh man. Mm. <laughs> oh man. Oh man, Maggie. That, that is some kind of good. It takes about an hour for it to go from just being out of the refrigerator to being on your plate. And it's an hour well spent we hear Maggie wants another bite down here. <laughs> it's an hour well spent. You just need to be patient and you'll have a meal that's gonna impress anybody that gets a bite of this meal. And that's what we're gonna do now. Thanks for being part of this Griddle Me This segment. Try to catch us again when we're cooking out at a campsite or when we're traveling somewhere. We'll see you down the road.